have to hold it now because uh, it's having problems. All right, we're almost there. We're getting closer. We are now streaming live on Facebook. And we have, yeah, Don Richard says, launch Sology, the way of the future. Yeah, woohoo, Sology. Yeah, that's right. We're going to do this. We're not going to be shy. We got eight people in the Zoom room. Let's see who's here. Don Richard, Lisa Erickson, Pia Holland, Sarah Griffiths, Shanine Banrion, and Terry Kempisti. Uh, and let me pull it up on uh, my phone so I can see the comments for uh, Facebook. Let's see. Kind of cool. We got two audiences going on. And okay. when we, yeah, we got, so we got people in the Zoom room can chat. And then, of course, on Facebook, they can chat. And so what will happen once we go to our own website next month, um, they'll be able to chat on Facebook, chat on YouTube, chat in the Zoom room on our website. So we'll be doing all three at the same time. So that's kind of cool. All right. So let me just pull it up here so I can see who's in the house so we can say hello, to everybody. Uh, 24 people in the house. We're going to have a great show today with our beautiful sister, Sherilyn. We got Jenny Smith in the house, Shaz Hargreave from Liverpool, Angel Devine, Soraya Williams from Sydney, Robert Orth, uh, Deborah Lothar, Garrett Petrov. Oh my God, they're coming in fast. Kathy Woldowski, Sherry Whiting, Joseph Kernan, Rita Gabriel Tomey, Katie Potter, uh, Clydeen Johnson from South Texas. I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. I don't know where you're at, Clydeen, but I'm from Corpus Christi. And I just recently met a light worker from Corpus Christi. And she said, I didn't know they had light workers in Corpus Christi. Um, Sally Ann Davis is in the house. Arena Costa is in the house. Anna Pritchard from New Zealand. Uh, Dwayne Arbizu. Um, Lisa Rose Ward from South Carolina. Elaine Leonard from... Dayton, Texas, my sister, Sally Ann Day. Oh, I said that. And Paula Skelton. Okay. 33 people in the house. I'm going to take about another 30, 45 seconds and share the show into our group affiliates, uh, you know, like 5D High, High Vibe Tribe, uh, 1111 Movement. I love that group. 5D Soul Tribe, the Twin Flame Healing Network. That's a good one. Galactic Federation of Light. I think that's the one I've been in the longest. News and Revelations of the Light, which is uh, Juan Jose Civicos, uh, and uh, there's one more. The event is happening. Jen McCarty and that bunch over there, they've been doing great work for a long time. We're all coming together. A few more people coming in. Carl Schwartz, did you guys see that show he did, we did together? Well, he did uh, some incredible, uh, incredible blues on the uh, National Steel Guitar. Monica Peterson's here. Michael Wood is here, and Deborah Lothar is actually from England. So we got 43 people in the house. Please share uh, if you would, so we can stay above the algorithms. We don't have to say that much longer uh, at Facebook. And uh, also thank you all for your continued love, support, and contributions that allowed us to get this far. And uh, uh, we're really grateful for that. We all are in the Soldier team. So we're going to keep pushing this thing forward for you. We've got a, a really beautiful divine sister friends with several people uh that i know very well and uh shikara tasha's in the house jesse may cc franklin andrew rollins linda winger's back um share lynn lives in sedona arizona i don't know how i missed her when i was there but uh i'm morgan and i'll be heading back that way i'm sure uh sometime maybe late summer early fall i just have a feeling i've been thinking that all year uh yeah, shares uh, uh, kind of quiet, and uh, I'm ready to hear her story. Welcome to Soul Speaks 5D. Thank you for sharing space with us and honoring us with your presence today. Thank you too. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not used to talking with these things on my ears, so it feels weird. So I'm, I'm like you know, a little you're... uncomfortable with that. But I'm a newbie at this. Uh, this is my first live show and uh what are we gonna talk about i'm really ex i'm really excited though i'm a little <laughs> nervous i'll be honest but not as nervous as i thought i might be so yeah. i you know i don't have the exact number um 
I'm a pretty good with numbers, but I think we're probably some, we did 900 shows, uh, 896 shows on be live. We did probably, I'd say probably 75 on Facebook and or zoom. So we're close to a thousand shows. And I would bet you that uh, with a thousand shows, we probably had at least, I don't know, 700, 50 guests you know some people have come back more than once and out of those 750 i will bet you probably uh, 150 did their first video on okay. this platform so wow. so I, i'm a big believer that this year is the year that the divine feminine stepping forward uh and being heard and mm -hmm. so that's what you're doing and thank you for all the work you've done because i know you've done a lot of work because i can see your pedigree and what you're doing now we can talk about whatever you want to talk about it's just a conversation. It's not a, it's not an interview. It's a right. conversation. So right. my, my, but if I had just met you knowing some of the people that we both mutually know, uh, the information they've given me and what I picked up on, you've been, uh, holding up the light for a long, long, long time. And I understand and have seen some of your work. You're an incredible artist. And I have, I have a feeling a few other things, uh, were you born this way? Did you have some type of traumatic uh, sequence of events that it woke you up? I mean, uh, what <laughs> faces of the universe do you communicate with? Uh, can you give us some background? Yeah. Uh, born this way, that's a great question. I, uh, I, I remember being put in the, in the pale yellow plastic thing in the hospital when I was born. Uh, and and that's about it as far as as coming in i i had a, a seriously abusive childhood um i appreciate you speaking about yours and there's a lot of things that you spoke about uh lucid dreaming all lots of areas where where i felt like we could connect into um yeah, it, it was abusive. I don't. I don't need to go into story about it. It. It actually. Um, you know, I think uh, made me who I am, inspired my art, and I had a couple of near death experiences, at least two, that I feel uh, when I was about two to three years old, and in those in those experiences in my perception, I went to the fairy realm. And, and then when I would come back, it was during some abuse uh, mm -hmm. being held underwater. When I came back, I, it, the times that I remember, I just hated coming back because I was coming back. I went into this beautiful light place and then, and then back into this thick world. And so I spent my life and I still, you know, I'll, I'll be real about it. I, I still am conflicted with the not wanting to be here. Yeah. Uh, and, and literally when I was 18, I did try to commit suicide a few times and ended up in mental wards for it. And it was all on perfect perfection. Yeah. Uh, I, when I was 13 years old, I started, I, I, um, I, I started to have visitations by these beings and I had no idea who the beings were until I was in the mental ward and discovered them. I'll give you the story. Uh, these beings, so all I knew is I was 13, I knew nothing. I was, I was brought up Christian and strict and I mean, I wasn't allowed to go out after the street lights were on. Everything was was controlled and confined and that was that's just the lighter side of the story there yeah, yeah. But, um i would be the first time it happened i remember it happened three times in a row i was I, we were visiting cousins and i was sleeping in my cousin's bed we were there and i was going into theta state and suddenly i felt a vibration at a uh and my, my i was paralyzed and and I was paralyzed until I broke free, free of it. And I ran in to tell my mom, they were still up. And uh, my mom 
is a good woman and she's just completely not in her body to the point where she wasn't able to protect us as children. I and mean, she had stories from me of she found ice in my diapers when I was a baby and she stayed with them, you know, so she just wasn't real. The Christian don't get divorced thing. Yeah. So uh, she had no uh, reference point for that and sent me back to bed and it happened again and again, three times in a row. She told me, she said, I think maybe you're just having some problems because your dad's being extra hard on you. Uh, well, this continued to happen and I had no place to speak about it. And so, um, yeah, it just, until I was literally the, 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 the last time, the third time I was in the mental ward, uh, they put you in there because it's illegal to try to kill yourself. And I would, these were serious attempts. These were, I mean, the last yeah. time I was, I was in a com coma for a few days. Uh, I wasn't meant to go. I was always like some angel intervened. And so I ended up, so the third time I was in this mental ward, so I'm in there and I'm already sensitive. I can, I can feel when I'm a child, I could always feel spirits around. Uh, I could feel things that other people couldn't. I had no, uh, you know, they were just scary to me. It wasn't fun. And when I was in the hospital, I remember this one time I was laying there in the bed. It was during the day, but I was laying there resting, going into the theta state. And I felt someone standing right next to me, right to my left. And I lifted my hand to feel who it was. And this cold wind blew it down to my chest. And then I was bang in that frozen place again. And when I broke free of it, it was maybe because I was in a mental ward with a bunch of supposed or labeled crazy people. I went ran, running, running through the halls, screaming. And I got the attention of a young doctor who took me into his office and set me down and said, what's going on? And for the first time, I was able to explain to someone what was happening. And so he, he brought me, he took me first personally through, uh, what's it called, a, a beta, beta, no, oh shoot, I'm not remembering, biofeedback, I think. I'm not sure if that's the, the name of what it's called, but he, he took me through a meditation and he made a meditation tape for me. And so I was able to, during my time there, I think I had to be there 30 days. Yeah. Um, and uh, I found a, a music room where no one, I, during the day where I could go and I, I would play this tape and bring myself into meditation. And I'm looking back on it now, I can say this is the first time I was like, I was, I was actually doing some shamanic journey training, you know? Yeah. Um, but what was amazing to me and still is today is that within five minutes and you, and it was probably less, less than five minutes, I could bring myself into that theta state and the, and the, oh, and so he, he suggested to me next time that, that humming and that, that paralyzing thing is going to come on, tell yourself not to be afraid, yeah. open your eyes, explore. And I'm a Sagittarius. I love to explore. And so it That's like came, it gave me some tools to to work with, and and I'll never forget the re the first time, and every time it happened, literally every time it happened, I always had to tell myself not to be afraid, even after I saw the tall ones. But what what I did was, I would tell myself not to be afraid, and then I would open my eyes and look around. Okay, I probably couldn't move my head because I was really frozen. Like I couldn't move my arms or anything. I would open my eyes and I would look and it would be like a quadruple vision, four of everything, not two, not three, four of everything. And when I, when I scanned down to the end of my feet towards the right, there were always these three tall, very tall beings that I didn't see faces they were just these i called them the tall ones at the time and i wasn't afraid of them they weren't what, scary what color was emanating from them was it white golden white it was, it was white yeah, yeah i mean for my to my memory it was more like a now white this, light now, now this was at uh, uh 18 or was this at 13 
This was when I was 18. No, I, okay. I went from, from 13. I went yeah. five years without knowing what it was. Yeah. Just, now, did you, did you communicate with them at 18? No, I didn't know enough about that. I yeah, just, just felt saying, like, yeah. yeah, I did later in life, though. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. you about that if you want. Yeah, but, and that's, yeah. How, and that's yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, I just want to point this out, too, for yeah. people that are listening or that may listen, which is one of the great gifts of this program is, a lot of what you've talked about, I've heard before from people, particularly feminine, uh, same story. And, and even to the point where they talk to them later in life. You know? Okay. Yeah. So cool. that's going to be interesting to hear what you, what you got to say about that. Yeah. Well, after my experience, yeah. So it, uh, j just in regarding them, I just felt completely safe with them. I knew without knowing about angels or being taught that because I was proud of this kid. They didn't even have mother Mary. They didn't have anybody. It was just, I didn't really know, but I, I knew I felt comfortable with them. At that point, I did begin to speak about it with people and I never met anybody, anybody right. at that time. I was living in um, LA and I quit talking about it because they just looked at me like I was crazy. And I honestly, I wasn't sure if I was crazy or not. So I well, quit it down years later. We'll just skip ahead. Uh, around. So at 18 there, then around at 35 years old, 36, 37, I think that was 35. Yeah, no, it was 37. I was 37 years old. So what was that like two years ago? No, I'm, 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 I'm in my 60th year. I think I'm the same age as you. I'm going to be 60 this year, the end of the year. I'm just curious. But, you're Sagittarius. When's your birthday? November 29th. November 29th. Yeah. yeah. Just, Actually, I'm really proud of it. Once I found out, it's the same birthday as Alex Gray. You know him course oh yeah yeah, yeah. i went yeah, to yeah. his place i went uh, michael van patten took me and morgan over to his place uh going back to the story yeah uh and again i want to point out somebody just put up a question what is this show i see it every day on my computer so this show is about people telling about their experiences and sharing their skills and abilities uh that you won't find on the mainstream media uh and uh you know, this is about our thousandth episode. So I just thought I'd let Rally Davis know that. Uh, now, so you, when, when was the first time that you talked to these tall light okay. beings? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I, 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 um, I had lived, I had moved up onto this land in the mountains of Malibu to, do you know Malibu area yes. at all? Okay. So it, it, like right above Cross Creek, if you look up, it's 2,000 feet above sea level and it's called the Wrights Land. It's Frank Lloyd Wright's okay. grandson. Um, they inherited it from him. Yeah. And it's ancient Chumash ceremonial land and they kept it completely raw. They're, they're like green activists. They're, they're amazing, amazing people. And the land is 27 acres of, of raw. There, there's like red rock windblown caves up there. Wow. Right behind, like I climbed up to them every day. I have so many stories. Oh my God. But um, this, so just to give you a little bit about this land, there is a medicine wheel that they built on in, when were the harmonic convergence? 1985 or I don't know. You must have been in this game a long time because <laughs> I don't even I wasn't even anywhere near being awake in 1985. <laughs> well, I won't say I was awake, but I was definitely living on some amazing property where the ancestors, everything was so palpably, magically alive. Yeah. Now, this is and, in uh, this is in um, um, Malibu. Yes. Malibu can OK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, just, it just says, I just want to say this. I stood on this medicine near this medicine wheel with he's passed on now, but he was the last uh, English speaking Shumash and a man. And he told me I stood on this very place when I was six years old with two of my elders who told me when we came on the boat from the islands, we mm -hmm. carried with us a 
or they carried with us the, I don't know, uh, a gourd of ashes. And we had sent them up into those rocks where I had done my vision quest already and had like an amazing experience. He wow. said, oh, I just saw a little fairy light. He said, he said, don't go, don't go up there and tell people. I was a little bit of the keeper of the land at the time because Mary yeah. and Eric would go away. Yeah, you, and, were, you were what, 37 at this time? Yeah, something that, like that. that. I mean, I, yeah, around, yeah. around yeah. there. Yeah. So it's very special sacred land. I'll just say that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so when I moved there, Mary, Mary Wright, had given me a book by Hank Wesselman. Mm -hmm. He lives in Hawaii. Maybe you've heard of him. He would be amazing for you to speak What's to. Him? Let me get to that. Hank Wesselman. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he wrote a trilogy of books. Spirit. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, look him up. So anyway, he yeah he uh, Spirit Spirit Walker is his first book. It was a trilogy of books. Mm -hmm. And she gave me his book, and she said he's going to be coming onto the land. Maybe you'd like to like take a look at his book and have a little bit of preface about uh, knowing him. So, and you're go, literally you're going, the, so you're going up there weekly or da daily. You're going up there. They allow you to go up there and you meet uh, the, the descendants of Frank Lloyd Wright who own this land. Yeah. And, and, they, and this is where it's gone to. So you got the books? Yeah, wait. So I, I did, they had a sweat lodge up there that was run by a, a Lakota lodge. And so I did... I did prayer up there for a year and then I got invited to live there. When all this happened, I was living there. I was living oh, wow. on the property right next to the sweat lodge. I mean, wow. literally I went up to those caves every, I was meant to be there. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah. uh, so she, so back to the book though, listen, now remember I had said, I quit talking about that because I had never met anybody who had experienced that. I was always looked like yeah. I was crazy. In the first chapter of his book, he talks about, uh, the same thing he yeah. he would be overcome with yeah although he took it, it he mm, is a, was already a shaman or he was an archaeologist he's an archaeologist he was one of the first to discover betty in america i mean in africa okay. Okay. the first yeah so like an yeah okay so um, and so he and had so i read and go ahead no go ahead go ahead I just read that he had experienced the similar feelings of the humming and the, uh, the yeah. and, but what he did was he found eventually, he found himself in Hawaii. Uh, mm -hmm. He saw himself seeing through the eyes of some, another person. Long story short, he, he realized that he was going 5,000 years into the future through this yeah. journey. Wow. And experiencing the earth is where it is, uh, where, where it will be in 5,000 years. Yeah. Future. Not what I did. You know, that wasn't my experience, but it was my first time hearing that. And so when he came, we sat down under the oak trees at, in this place near the water. And, and I told him my experiences. And he, he taught me shamanic, some shamanic tools uh, to kind of help you know uh boundaries and claim my space i'll say and and that and invited me to invite them back so okay so i forgot me, to say i forgot to yeah. like say this part of the story yeah when i was about 23 22 i was 22 i was partying i was a model at the time and commercial actress in la i was also partying a lot um we forgive you oh thanks it was good <laughs> <laughs> uh i i uh i had an experience one night where i had been drinking and got home and and uh suddenly there was this being and it was it was right over me and yeah. it was a whole different body configure it was not tall they never came close to me. They never made me feel uncomfortable. This one was like, holy shit. And mm -hmm. it was the first time. And ever since I was 13, I would always try to break out of this paralysis. Well, yeah. this time I literally broke out of it and I sat up in bed. And then 
realized I broke out of it and then I passed out and yeah. I wasn't that drunk. I mean, it yeah. wasn't like I passed out from that. It was passed out from the whole thing. And I went into a dream and I dreamed that my, my new stereo was fixed up weird, like ET in the movie ET, you yeah. know? Uh, and I woke up in the morning and it was broken. It didn't work anymore. It was completely fried and it was new. I was in such denial at the time. I just said, fuck no more, no yeah, more. No and more. I, they tried to come in again and they kept trying to come in until I was about 30. They said so they tried for several years, yeah. but I was able, I think because I broke through, through it, I just, no more. Yeah. And then he said, I invite you to invite them back. And he gave me certain guidelines uh, into that container. So uh was he was he present when you did this when because no, i know it's okay, i was so alone no so, what, so, so this is what happened i okay. was i was turned on to uh breath of fire kundalini breath of fire and oh my god for years i was so uh i i i could probably use the word addicted to it i literally stop had to stop that too because i was so into it that i remember sitting on the edge of a cliff and at sunset and doing it, not thinking that I was going to pass out. And I started to go. Yeah. Uh, and it was well, just like, it was a lesson in trust, 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 surrender, surrender. And I was fine, but I realized I was like, Whoa, your, your, your team wouldn't have let you fall. And if, and if you had fallen, your angel wings would have come out. And you'd have <laughs> okay. So the first time I tried, so I had a partner at the time and he said, you, I liked, I liked, he saw that I like to meditate with my arms out like this. He said, yeah. you like to do that. You should try breath of fire. So he taught me it. So I was on my deck on this land with my arms out and I'm doing the breath of fire. And I had no idea this was going to happen, but I just whoop, peeled over and I went into a vision and they were there. And it was, it, it, mm, I have every, I have journals and journals. I've written all this stuff down. It's been years since I visited it now, but it was basically, they were letting me know that we were family. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Uh, yeah. Very similar story to what a lot of people have talked about and are experiencing. And, uh, also I'll just say that one of our sayings here at Sology is that crazy isn't crazy anymore. So, yeah. For those of you who happen to come across this and you've had experiences like this and you've been ostracized and you've been institutionalized, uh, you're in good company, you yeah. know, you're in good company. So, so you had this conversation with them. They told you that y'all were family. Did they give you any Intel or anything? Have you seen them since? Do they come around or is that pretty much the end of that part of it? That's all that's coming up right now. I mean, yeah, they've been around, um, they're, they're still with me. How, how uh, I painted them. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, I painted them. And and I I was a hermit on the mountain. And that was like my month's time. Yeah. I lived there for five, oh, more five and a half years. Yeah. So. And yeah. and then I was invited off the mountain to move here to Sedona. Oh, so you've been in Sedona for 20 years or almost? Almost. Yeah, since 2002. Yeah. Do you yeah. know, uh, do you know TL? You know TL Guadalupe? No. TL? no. She's there. Of course, Shakina's there and Kimberly. You know, Shakina, you know, I know Shakina. Uh, or I, met, I met Shakina. I don't know her real well. But. Kimberly Griffith. Yeah, I, there's a lot. Of, yeah, I can't. I love that community over there. So now. now to reach out to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So now, now it's 2019. Uh, you've watched. You've gone from being the only person that you knew this was happening to with no one to talk to these amazing experiences, uh, you know, growing up in, in L.A. and then up there in uh, 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 Malibu and then you get to Sedona. So you've been like a, a front runner in, in the happening places, you know, <laughs> the cultural centers of these light workers. How, what's it been like to watch all of this unfold in the collective? especially the last few months, uh, even two, three years. I mean, have you, I mean, it's, it's had to be a big relief to you. I mean, yeah. 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 
Yeah, especially and and especially being connected now into Shanine Bunren, Bunren's, uh group and and Martin McNichol and and in you, like every show, there's the light language going on, and that's another thing that I mean I've lived here in Sedona for all those years and I'm, and I. I I haven't been privy to that, but I also kind of hide away still, even though I'm off the mountain, it's taken me a long time to get out. So I spent a lot of time alone. Yeah. So um, but are you in West Sedona? Yeah. Yeah. So are now um so do you communicate? I, I mean, we all communicate with the universal, you know, whatever we want to call it. But obviously in this realm, we we don't have all the answers, but that universe takes on different faces, uh, such as these these three tall white beings or whatever it may be. Do you communicate or commune with certain faces of the universe uh, in the work that you do? I mean, do you have do you have uh, certain divine essences or galactics that you uh, communicate with? Mm, I do, and I'm. It's it's. Uh... I, I'm not going to have the verbiage of of most of the people on your show in the New Age, you know, Sunak Kumara, or you know, it's not. I don't so know. Much. Any of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know any okay. of them. I'm I'm better with the wind and the trees. And oh the, yeah. Okay. The yeah. Water, there we go. Yeah. Okay. The the nature spirits totally mm -hmm. flat on. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's so many. Uh, there is so many beings that do, but um, as far as identifying them. For the most part, I'd say nature's. I've, I've seen the fairies twice, three, three dimensionally, and they communicate to me all the so, time in one way yes. or another. Yeah, I want to. So let's talk about that. You know, Shakina, uh, we're very close, Shakina and I, and um, and so we we haven't done it. We're going to do a show, I think, in about a week. We haven't done one in a while. She's been busy, but she wrote me and was telling me how she was having a lot of engagement with uh, um i think it was the fairies uh that they were really becoming prominent because she's big with the crystals over there and everything but i'd love to hear about what kind of interaction you have with the fairies mm -hmm. and uh, the nature kingdom uh, the nature spirits and uh, if they give you any type of intel that's helpful for yourself mm -hmm. or maybe what's happening collectively mm -hmm. Uh, well, back to the land in Malibu and back to a little bit of that story during that time. I was, I, I did uh, seriously 13, about 13 years of Native American ceremony from, from beginning there on that land to sweat lodges that turned into, I was, I'd already done some activism work in my, when I was 21, I went to the Hopi, the Navajo and uh, Diné and the Zuni reservations and danced with the handicapped children, basically. But it all had to do with um, bringing into awareness the uranium spill, things that just the government has allowed, to, literally located them to places that were contaminated and they uh, were suffering. So I would go there to, to help with them. And then when I got turned on to the sweat lodge, I got turned on to um, more activism work. And where was I going with that? Remind me of your question. Communication with the fairies and then- uh, Okay, the okay, okay. okay. So uh, anyway, I got into Native American ceremony and, and learned about offering to the mother earth. I feed her every day. I would encourage everyone to just like in some way uh, acknowledge the Mother Earth Gaia in, in that way. But what I did, just as I, I'm a, I'm a playful being, <laughs> and I, uh, I would put offerings out for the fairies, mm -hmm. including, you know, to the ancestors, and I want to put them out special for the fairies, and they, they, uh, I never believed that, I mean, I believed that they were in another dimension. And I guess they still are, you know, but for me, they're not. They're, for me, yeah. uh, one night, and it happened within a month, I was not on medicine, um, plant medicine or anything. 
uh, although I had done mushrooms, I think I was about 40 this time. I'd done mushrooms for the first time in my life. I had always refused them before because I was told that if you don't feel good about yourself, don't do them. Yeah. But I knew I didn't, so I never did. But this was in a healing situation. It was, a, it, was, it was with someone who was a sound healer. He gave it to me. I asked to see the fairies. I, did, I saw them in my journey, and they showed me some deep things about my life. Uh, but I didn't see them three-dimensionally. So two weeks later, I'd say about two, three weeks later, I was, and in these days especially, no TV for 20 years. Um, and no internet at that point either for me, really. This is the only, I, yeah. So uh, I, if I, I would either be in, my, in front of my fire during the winter or I would be under the stars at night. And this happened to be during the winter and I was, at, I was in front of my fire and a fairy appeared in my fire. Like she was there and it was just, it, she appeared to me, she had double opalescent wings and she was just this and I didn't freaking know what to do. It was just like, wow, I don't know. And then she disappeared and then Three weeks later, it was within a month span time, she appeared again in almost the same place in my fireplace, only this time she was holding a five-pointed star. And I'm mm. looking at it, I'm like, wow. And then her whole image shape-shifted into a seahorse. Wow. And I'm like, all right, so again, I've, I've done... Native American, I'm like, well, I know what horse medicine, I know buffalo. What is seahorse? Well, I I went to um, sleep and I was, oh my God, I have the picture right here. I, I'm going to want to try to show you. Because there was this woman I met through my art. She showed up in one of my art shows. I started doing art shows when I got divorced at 35 and to, to make money because I'd given up my career. And, 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 and I always made my art shows to benefit some uh, cause. So she, her name was Stella. I called her Black Sunshine. And she called me early in the morning. Like, I think it was 7.30 or something. She didn't even say hello. She was just like, girl, something about the seahorse. And I'm like, what, Stella? What are you talking about? But she was always calling me with a... She was always calling me with, um, I had a dream. You were, you were walking up to the medicine wheel carrying a bundle of wheat. Well, it was fall equinox, and I had just done that a couple of days before, prior. So she was definitely a, a seer. And she said, I said, well, tell me, what about the seahorse? Because I saw the seahorse in the ferry last night, and it was a freaking trip. And she said, well, it's what we're missing in our men, the seahorses carry the bait the male seahorse carries the babies within him wow. in the birthing process wow so the only species on the on the planet that does that i was and wondering so, my stomach's been getting bigger <laughs> oh boy i have to tell you i i have never i have never met anyone who sees like you who feels like you who um well, I, I, it's it's just blows me away. You know no. what I mean? No, I don't. No. <laughs> we've had, uh, but I will say this: we've had. Uh, I'm getting a couple of downloads right now, but we've had a couple of people. Uh, Maria Iverson from Sweden says she'd love to see your art, and also, also uh, Don Richard says you have painted many and i'm assuming she's talking about the nature uh beings nature spirits you do a lot of painting how much how often do you do a painting is it once a week uh, twice a week are you painting every day yeah for more than 35 years up until recently because i've had some health challenges um every day for more than 35 years wow. every day and and when i literally when i lived on those five and a half years in the mountains of malibu i was yeah. painting 15 to 18 hours a day. And, yeah. it, and if I wasn't in front of the canvas painting, 
I was going out onto the land and making a prayer or putting down an offering. It was nonstop, except for picking my son up from school or something like that. It was nonstop ceremony. Yeah. And then, and the fairies, you know, so you were asking about how they speak to me. I mean, there was a a really windswept day uh, up on the mountain. Um, And I was going through a really hard time. I'm a Scorpio moon. I go through a lot of hard times. Things like I definitely uh, call myself a Persephone sometimes. (laughs) Um, But I was sitting out and side and what I always did. I always spent a couple of hours in the morning out in nature just to do my thing and praying and journaling. Yeah. And, and, and there was an, uh, maybe a football field away. There was a, an almond tree that was in bloom. This was this really deep wind going on. But, but right in front of me, after I was praying, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it brought me around. I followed them. There was one petal, one petal, seven petals that brought me around the corner of my house. So, and I'm a tracker. I like to listen to what's like going on. And, yeah. and so I follow them and they bring me and I, I plan on going to sitting down and I end up doing it. And they bring me into a place where there's a bunch of rabbit shit. Okay. <laughs> and what was the point of that? Rabbit put, because I was in my, I was in my fearful shit. Oh. It's the way I perceived it. So I was like, okay, you guys would be funny with me. All right, I'll sit here. You know, and then I sat there, and and then I would, and then I went into a meditation, and my eyes are closed, and I hear, and I'm like, oh. I thought like a spaceship was landing, and it was. It was, I had never witnessed anything about like this before, but right over the medicine wheel, there was like, I want to say thousands. It was probably hundreds, hundreds of geese flying over and they created this. And <laughs> Wow. And what was that message? Do you think? Um, the divine feminine, just, well, I don't know. Well, you know, yeah. I probably had an assessment about it now. I have been living in, black mold i'm out of it now for a year but it's still compromised my memory a lot uh black Mm -hmm. toxic mold you know i've run into somebody else that's uh been in that situation and uh how are you and this may be helpful to some people uh, but how are you handling that uh, energetically speaking from an energetic standpoint rather than i mean i mean are you doing anything from an energetic standpoint uh non traditional standpoint at this point and this is just the end of the year i really had a a breakdown i had a a deep breakdown and i i don't go on to facebook typically i would post my post as tried to post my posts every day of my art for the last year but i would post it on instagram i would include facebook and i would never go on there and read any of the writings or I didn't know you're supposed to respond. Somebody just recently said, yeah. he, he came to me from high school. He's been tracking me. I <laughs> know he's a beautiful person. I don't mean it like that. He would just say, hey, how come you don't ever respond on Facebook? I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, I didn't know. So, but I, I happened to open the phone and find Shanine and, mm-hmm. and find the group. Oh, and you, found, t- you, found, you found Shanine. That's one of the first things you found. Oh, very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was it was in a place where I honestly don't know that I don't know that I was going to make it through. It just was that dark. Yeah. Um, but what I'll say is is through this and witnessing the light language was which is another I had the light language came to me. Um, out of my country, it just happened. It just came through. Um, and I maybe should I tell you about that? Am I going all over the place? Just no, no, you're good. Wait, but but I want to hear about this. So you, this recently happened. My hands have been tingling. No, years ago in. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about not the light language. I'm talking about you had the black mold. You you had kind of a breakdown. Your friend, your your uh, admirer found you after 50 years, 40 years, and 
track you down and told you that you need to comment. You found Shanine's group, seen some light language. Did it help you come back mm -hmm. that you started to uh, interact with people that were like yourself? Yes. Yeah. Because, it, yeah. Um, and one of the things is my hands and my feet are tingling a lot, a lot. And whenever they began to tingle, that's what I've been starting to do is just put my hands actually on myself instead of sending me. I mean, I love to send the energy out as well, but um, that's, that's my modality I'm using right now. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to, uh, we've had several people ask about it. Um, I wanted to put some of your, your, your paintings on the screen. Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah. Okay, let me just see. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. I don't know. We'll just kind of freestyle it here and see what happens. Well, we got a we got a question here from somebody. Uh, Terry Kempisti. She says, "Hi, Cher. I've always wondered about something when looking at your beautiful visionary paintings. Do you ever have visions of a past life or an alternate universe experience when you're deep into the painting and in that?" buzzing creative zone thank you mm -hmm. yeah yeah i i had um i've had a lot of visions of past lives i don't know that i can say they come through oh yeah they have oh yeah they have they have come through painting yeah. okay um yeah yeah i definitely do <laughs> i wish i could show you the painting I'm looking at it right now. It's not it's not a place to be able to show you. It's called Creation's Child. I don't know what you have there. Can you I, see what I, can you see what I have on the screen? Yeah, right yeah. That's right. um that's they came riding on the back of a whale. That's the name of that painting. That's gonna be in my new deck. And it has the, to do with the king, what the we've done king, to the mm -hmm. The Kings, is it the king riding on the back of the whale? Is that what you they said? came. They came. The women. They came oh, riding on the back. They of the came whale. riding on the back of. Right. The, okay. Yeah. I have a. I, I have a friend who's who who that's works a, a lot with the Aboriginals, and when he saw it, that's what he said. And so I took on the title because of his phrase. Amazing. Yeah, he works a lot with the Ara Aboriginals and and with the waters. So cool beings. I love that you chose that one. Well, I'm just going yeah. down the. Uh, the, the name of her page is, uh, and you can see it in the right corner over here, but I'm going to go ahead and expand this, though. Uh, Mystic, Mystic Art Medicine. Mystic Art Medicine. I think you can get a better view of it there. Now, this one here, uh, this one looks pretty interesting. That's a really, really old one. That's probably from when I was about 28 years old. Yeah, that's, a, that's really, it almost looks like a... Uh, multi-dimensional adam and eve yeah wow yeah. the two chalices okay. over here on the stone on the uh how did you the, find uh, that i don't even have that one on my website uh, yeah, find it's, it's on here it's on mystic art medicine page oh. <laughs> this one's interesting with the two birds which seems to be a painting in itself and then there's these stairwells going up like on a pyramid it's in front of another painting. Um, this is a painting that I did uh, to, I, I, like I said, uh, I, I don't do a lot of hand activist, hands-on activists anymore, but oftentimes I'll, this painting I did specifically to raise money for uh, a group in Peru. Yeah. So it has the eagle, the condor, and the mm. ketakudu. I mean, the... Now yeah. this this is not a painting, but that looks pretty cool. That that is a. Uh, it is a painting. That's a painting. Well, it's it, it's. I mean, you got a you, you've got a a, a Merkaba. You've got yeah, a. Yeah, it's two a, triangles. Uh, and yeah. before my grandson was born, his parents asked me to paint a painting for him, and yeah. so this is this is in the process of that. It. it it's not complete there. It's just I'm doing some gritting. Uh, I like to play that way. Put crystals and throughout. I like the whole, that. You got the, the turtle. Class. You got a turtle shell. You got a deer's hoof. Uh, I don't know what that is in the middle, but that's really cool. Whatever's in the middle. It's a crystal ball. 
crystal ball. Yeah, very cool. The whalebone at the top. Okay, this is part oh. of creation's child. Yep. Wow. Yeah. 2013, yeah, poor, this is a portion of a painting. Yeah. Wow. So you got the fairies. Looks like a priestess, some kind of multi-dimensional priestess. The, of course, you got the dolphin. And the hula yeah. girl. There is fairy at the top. You don't even see the fairy here, but she's blessing a phallus. She's, I wonder if you have the, the rest okay. of the pieces. Okay, that's, yeah, it, this is before there it became color. In 2001, I thought it was complete with that painting. And, uh, okay, so this is some kind of uh, something you did a while back, it looks yeah. like. So you make eco friendly printed 65, yeah. 65 full color cards with a 158 page illustrated booklet, $35. Sounds very reasonable. Medicine card readings with Sher Lynn. An hour and a half, 111. Uh, medicine, soul painting. Uh, art for the hearts. Tap into the shamanic art of creative expression with Cher Lynn. Uh, wow. So you actually conduct painting classes as well. That's I cool. have, yeah. Very cool. You're, uh, you are uh, multi-talented. Uh, I better get that off of there. It's got your phone number. Oh, now what's this? That's in Sedona, obviously. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I had, oh, I have a good story about this one. You might oh. like it. Yeah. This is, this is, she's six feet tall. Uh, I lived here before I moved to, I moved to Hawaii for a year. I lived in Maui. Um, oh, yeah. but I, so I lived in Sedona for a few years and there was a medicine wheel on, on, right in the, on the property. This uh -huh. is in the village, in the village of Oak Creek. And oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was up there one day and I, I actually, when I moved to Sedona, I vowed to sing four songs to the mother every mm -hmm. single morning. And oftentimes mm -hmm. I did it every sunset, but for sure every morning. And uh, I was with a partner who was, would make me angry a lot. <laughs> so I, I was up there and I was crying and I was just, oh, oh, crying. And I look up at this, which was at the time, just an altar, it was just an altar space. And I looked up at her and I saw the goddess in, in, in her. So when I started painting, at one point, my whole process shifted. And long story short, because I know probably don't have that much more time, I, I, um, I only now follow the lines. If I'm going to paint somebody, all uh, like Kuan Yin that you saw the other day, I don't know, I didn't actually know much about her at that time that I painted her. It was before I moved here to Sedona. I, uh, I just know that whatever shows up, I play, I intuit the colors, I let it dry, then I meditate with it, and then I wait to see what I see. And I do soul paintings this way as well. Yeah. Um, when I saw this, this is the first time I saw, I didn't know I could see like I see in my paintings. I can yeah. see and rock these beings. So I got out and for the next, and it was heat of summer. I mean, mm -hmm. heat of Sedona summer. I was out here every day painting this mother goddess through. Wow. That's and, yeah, yeah. And, and you're having ceremony, I can tell. I can tell. A lot. A lot. And, and then on the, just to complete on the other side, and then I found another rock where I painted the Father God tree of life. And so it's the masculine, the feminine balance. But I walked up here one night and um, upset, and it was, but it was in the night. And I, I looked just to get away. And I looked up and I saw what I thought was Venus. Mm -hmm. And she was brighter than I'd ever seen her before at this time. And I came and I, I got to my altar and I always had uh, juniper boughs there and, um, and candles and I lit the candles and I thought, I'm gonna turn around and be with Venus. And I turned around and it wasn't a cloudy sky. She was gone, like yeah. completely not there anymore. And I was like, I was still in denial about the beings out there. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, because I, I was like, look and look and look. And then I was like, I kind of got like this spook about me. And I went, hmm. Hmm. and he turned around. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to be with you. And I turned around back to the to the candles. And there was a praying mantis. 
And he was like, he was like, one of his arms was up. And I had just recently heard that the, the masters, if they see a praying mantis, they'll, they'll emulate what the praying mantis does. And so I got myself into the position of what the praying meant, which leaned my head a little closer. And when I did, it was like, and I'm like, whoa, I move out, it stopped. I go back into the pose, three times or so I do that. And then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like stay here for a while because I think there's something happening. And then when I turned back around, Venus was back there. Yeah. Only I think now it was a spaceship. Yeah. I don't know that it was Venus. I don't know. I saw something this morning. Uh, when I woke up, I woke up. It must have been uh, 5 o'clock, 5.15. Sun comes up here. I'm looking at the, at the ocean. Uh, I'm looking um, east towards the United States mainland. And... Uh, so I always look from where I'm sleeping. I can look out the window and I know exactly where the sun's coming up. And I knew it was, I knew it was pretty early because it was still very dark, but right above where the sun would be coming up. And it, there was this incredibly bright superstar. I mean, it was like bluish whitish gold was coming off of it. It was really, really big. I think it might've been serious and I was too tired to get my phone or it wasn't charged for me to go check and see what it was on uh, sky map. Uh, uh, Shanine's got a question. I've got several questions. I'm gonna try to run through them and get them all. Uh, she says, your mystic art medicine cards caused a major activation for me, which you know the story around. I want to ask what was happening in your life when you created that deck as I had such a response to them. Oh, uh, well, okay. Thanks, Shanine. Um, the deck, is cre the deck was created from the moment I started painting. And, and from the moment I started painting and the passion that I did every single day, um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was an opening, a, an expansion of myself that I had never actually found anywhere else. Um, when I moved from the mountains of Malibu to Sedona, I had planned on this deck and I had a techie partner who, who actually, you know, we started to create the cards on computer as all. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in Sedona, I had my art in a gallery and it was supporting us um, really nicely. And then the woman wanted my art out for some reason, um, she was an artist that she wanted to put her stuff in there. That's cool. Cause it put me into a place where I went out to the Creek. I, I'm in, a, I'm in a, a, a daily process of, of journaling. And so I go out to the Creek. I have to, I'm a mermaid living here in Tiana. This is how a mermaid lives. She sprays, sprays water on herself all day long. <laughs> but um, I go out to the water and I was journaling. I'm like, well, if I have to, I, I have to get a job because my partner's like, well, we have to, you got to get a job. And if I have to get a job, I want to, I want to help people. I want to continue to paint. I want to, I may, I want to be by the water. Shortly thereafter, within an hour or two, I drove right by center, a place called Center for the New Age, which is like a real psyche, psychic place. I pull in because I see somebody I know walking out the door and then I'm talking to her, telling her, this is what I'm looking for. And she says, and then the owner walks out. She says, oh, this is Cheryl Lynn. She's an artist. I give her my card. It's Archangel Michael on it. She looks at it and she says, oh, you could come here and, 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 and paint spirit guide paintings down by the water. I already have a tent set up for you. Only wow. thing is you're going to have to call yourself a psychic. And I'm like, Ugh, no, uncomfortable, not on. And yet so the whole. So that's how it happened. Wow. I had to say yes, because I was like, oh, my God, this is this is so. No, how it happened is, is I, I realized I'm like, I have this deck already created on my computer. I hadn't written any of it yet, but I yeah. knew the art so well that yeah. that's when I started to do readings for people using my cards wow and the first one was nervous and after that i just saw how much they help people and i could see things i could see when they had like an entity around i could see yeah, yeah. like so much and i didn't know that so yeah very cool got another one from 
Sarah Griffith, and she says the fairies must hold a secret to eternal youth. Ah. She says in your sixtieth, <laughs> she says in your sixtieth year in recovering from toxic mold, and you look about thirty. <laughs> your, car, your cards are absolute magic. You have unlocked my inner shaman with them. My readings have gone up 20 notches since I got them this week. So these are uh, something that you offer uh, from your Facebook page and or your personal Facebook page. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. That's cool. Um, let's see. Let me go back here. I just want to get a couple of more of these in here if I can get... There's a picture of you. There's that one that we saw earlier that had that other picture in front. Oh, there's another right. one on the rock. Yeah, there's another one right. you did on the rock. Okay, yeah, that's uh, somebody I'm t I took a, yeah, we were there doing some ceremony. That's the other, the other rock part. Yeah. And oh, I okay. follow the lines, totally didn't put anything in there that wasn't there. Wow. The chocolate tree, I've been there. That's where my art is. Is it a really lot, a was, lot of it? A lot of it. That's was, my that's my home hub. I was there. I was there. I was uh yeah, I was there a lot, actually. I was there a lot. So yeah. I didn't even notice. I don't notice anything anyway. So there was a there was a couple other ones. Um I don't I don't think I might have missed them on the Facebook side over here, but uh let me see if I can find one real quick. Just I don't wanna let's see. Okay, here um so Don Richard says, um, does the person or people come in the painting first or the message? What is your process? Blah, blah, blah. Person or painting, you know, like you mean when I do a soul painting, I guess is what like you Like how do you, I, I mean, I think in general, how do you. I'll just, in general, the process. I'll take, I'll take a canvas. I'll pull the plastic out of it. I'm not making my own canvas. But, um, and I'll take it down, typically I'll take it down to the river and I'll dip it in the river and cleanse it and then I'll bring it back home. And people, people know that I do these things and they'll like bring, like I have water from Lord's France. I have uh, sacred waters from all, of, from John of God. I have sacred water from all over the world and I will intuit what waters to use. And then I'll, before I ever put any paint on, I'll, I'll, I'll do sacred geometry with the water on the canvas and then yeah. I'll grid it with crystals. This is just, this is me playing. I've done it this way for, well, way more than 20 years. I don't know. But um, when I started doing it, it was only because I like to play. But yeah. I realized that there is a real, there is a real medicine that comes into actually doing that. And then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll intuit what the colors are uh, and I'll lay those down and I'll play. I'll just let myself have fun. I really get out of, I've learned to get out of my head, at least in my yeah. painting process yeah. uh, of judging and anything and just like allowing. It's shoot. Art has taught me the painting for more than 35 years has really actually showed me how um, the guidelines of, of the a high, high guidelines on how to live my life and trust yeah. Yeah. in yeah. Uh, and then, so, you're, you're, and then I'll and then I let it dry and then I'll meditate with it and I'll wait to see what I see. Yeah. yeah. When I started doing soul paintings back at the Center for the New Age, which was before I moved to Hawaii, was uh, 2003. In 2003, for only four months, and then I jumped on over. Um, I didn't know that I could see the way I could see. I mean, I knew I could see things, but when I started doing these, so the, let's say a man from Newport Beach, he came in and he hired me to do his soul painting. He wanted a little bit of a bigger one. And as I was working on it, one day I'm meditating it and I see this man play, doing slam dunk. Like, and that was you know, very unusual for me to see in one of my paintings. <laughs> And so I, I was not, I was uncertain at the time. So I called him and I said, Hey, did you play basketball in college? He said, I didn't go to college. I was like, Oh, and they went, but I was in college and no, I, at, in college age, I was in the military 
And no. I, I played a basketball game, which did, I did a slam dunk and it got the attention of the officers and they took me and they put me in special training. Wow. So I went back to the painting to, to, to paint him in thinking, okay, this is supposed to be in his painting and it wasn't there anymore. And so I, I didn't put it, I, I brought in other stuff. Wow. It, it, for me, that message then was that came in later. I didn't know it, but I needed to um, help him clear some stuff that would happen in that military time. If you know what I mean, that yeah, yeah. special training. Well, I like this, uh, the way you get your stuff and then the way you put it out there. Uh, so now people can find, uh, cause there's been a couple of comments that they want to get a copy of your cards. Uh, let's see. And, uh, this is mystic art medicine, Facebook page. Oh, that's I'm where you were. Okay. I'm assuming they can get in touch with you there. And Better then, they go to, I mean, yeah, but uh, I can try to remember how to, I don't actually, I created that page a long time ago. And I, like I said, I, um, I just asked people on this page last week to go directly to share Lynn. I okay, do all so, my art on that's not so, really a private page. So you're, you're on, uh, okay. So they're, they're going to go yeah. to your, your, your yeah. page. Yeah. Mes they can message you. Yeah. Cause you've got, oh, you got mystic art. Yeah, medicine. that's my, that's my website. Okay, so that's your website. I clicked Mystic Art and it came uh -huh, up. Uh-huh, I know. Okay, so here's the website. Uh, okay, this is your website. Uh, well, leave it on for a minute. I am. It's going uh, to give you a little, little, yeah. one more. You got to see this. I oh, know. Okay, yeah. This was a, yeah. That's good. That's it. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there's here. One more shot. No, no. Yeah. One more shot. There. That one. Yeah. That was a real orb coming out of my crystal didgeridoo. I don't I, doubt that. I don't doubt that, that at all. The fairies health. I was talking to that man about fairies, and he didn't yeah. believe, but he remembered seeing them in the forest in Switzerland when he was a little boy. Very cool. Very cool. So you do. So I'm looking through here. You've got uh, gallery, main goddess, indigenous, charity, soul paintings, rock art, sessions. you got a medicine wheel tour, fairy wheel tour, medicine card readings. You've also got the deck under in your shop, some uh, Gisley prints and apparel and uh, contact information. So they can either go to your uh, your website, which is uh, mystical, mystic. What was it? Mystic, mystic Art uh, Medicine. Mystic yeah. Art Medicine. Mystic Art Medicine. Yeah. Or they can uh, go to com. Etsy or they can go uh, to Amazon. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, if you can, or, or maybe uh, get uh, somebody can put her links in the comments so people will know how to get in touch with you. Because uh, as most people that come on the show, I'm sure you're going to get an influx of people contacting you for sessions and product. Uh, so you might want to, uh, you know, make some room on your calendar today and tomorrow. And, uh, and I'm glad to, that we can help facilitate that. It's been a pleasure. I'd love to get into maybe your cards next time and, and actually get into that because I can see they're very unique and there's a lot gone into them. And uh, I think that'd be real interesting, even if, you know, even if we just kind of go through them and you just show us what they are and what they mean and, and whatever comes from it. Are you up for that? Absolutely. I feel okay. so honored. I'm so grateful. Thank you yeah. very, very much. Well, we're honored. We're well, honored. I look forward to doing it again, meeting you in person eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, blessings to you. Oh, you. and your grandbaby too. <laughs> you take care. See y'all later. Might be back on later today with a surprise show. I don't know. Oh, yay. <laughs> we'll see you, Cher. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you.